good morning good morning everybody today we are here live on facebook on dams platform to talk about a very very important topic polysomnography i include this topic as a very very high yield in aims exam coming in next 2 3 days and on recent exams they have asked two questions today i have with me dr bharat kati dams faculty in pulmonology he is md pulmonology pulmonology and uh, chest medicine and excessive daytime sleepiness this is the topic clinical topic which we have selected it has two predominant differential diagnosis one is a narcolepsy which i talk from a psychiatrist perspective and one is an obstructive sleep apnea which he'll be talking from a uh, pulmonologist perspective so i hand over to dr bharat and he will discuss with you regarding a case dr bharat over to you So this was one case which came to my OPD. The patient was 55 year old man with 10 year history of worsening of loud snoring. So he awakens with snoring and occasionally is aware of brief gasping upon uh, awakening. So he had snoring and also some uh, obstructive events during his sleep. He feels uh, very tired and fall asleep whenever sedentary. So there is daytime sleepiness. His memory, concentration, libido and patience have decreased. So there is psychosocial abnormality. And medical history includes hypertension and diabetes mellitus. So there is some uh, complicating illness also. He doesn't take alcohol and he is uh, uh, non-smoker. On physical examination, he is mildly hypertensive. He is 110 kg and uh, height is 172 centimeter. So this shows he is also morbidly obese and neck circumference is also very high. Usual neck circumference will be in the range of 16 to 17 inches. If it is more than that, he is high risk for obstructive sleep apnea. And nasal passages mildly erythematous and rest of the examination was unremarkable. So this shows in the clinical history itself, snoring, tiredness and his uh, hypertension, age, gender is all suggestive of high risk of obstructive sleep apnea. So then this is uh, a depiction of uh, normal airway on the left hand side you can see it is open whereas on the right hand side you can see there is a excessive collapse because of that there will be no air flow and this results in obstructive sleep apnea. Now coming to this case. So now we need to discuss what is the most consistent with diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea as I listed down his snoring, his tiredness, his uh, observed events, so his BMI is very high, his age and gender all predispose him to obstructive sleep apnea and what further studies are recommended how to manage this patient will be discussed now. So now for this gold standard will be polysomnography that will be discussed by Dr. Sachin sir. Uh, thank you Dr. Bharat. So, regarding polysomnography, polysomnography it is a, a combination of modality where we study EEG, ECG, EMG, EOG, snore, nasal and oral airflow, thoracic and abdominal respiratory effort, pulse oximetry and heart rate, body position, legs, arms, activity. All students appearing for exams, please, this is important for you all to note that all of the following are included in polysomnography except answer was intraarterial O2 assessment. This was asked in a latest AIMS exam. And polysomnography is a modality which we use in detection of sleep disorders. May it be breathing related sleep disorders or may it be hypersomnolescence like narcolepsy. Like we have a case here excessive daytime sleepiness. Now we will evaluate it like either it is OSA or narcolepsy or any other sleep disorder. Before I take you to that, let us first talk about a question which came on this particular topic. On this particular topic, this was the question which came in the last exam. What was the question that the polysomnography three parameters were considered EEG, EMG and EOG. EEG, EMG and EOG. So in this they ask the third column third indicates which part of the uh, sleep. Column third indicates which part of the sleep. Let us take go ahead one by one. EEG in 1 is a fast wave, EEG in 2 is again a fast wave and EEG in 3 is a slow wave, EEG in 1 is a fast wave, EEG in 2 is a fast wave, EEG in 3 is a slow wave, EMG muscle activity, chin EMG we usually record is present in 1 is less uh, or almost absent in 2 and is present in 3 and EOG that is electrooculogram is present in 1, it is also there in 2, but it is not there in 3. 
So, we know that there are two pa pa types of sleep REM rapid eye movement and NREM non rapid eye movement. So, EOG is positive in awake state and REM stage which will not be there in NREM and we know NREM is a slow wave sleep. So, this was the question which came they asked you to interpret column 3 and this is the what we got awake stage REM stage and NREM stage. So, third is an NREM this question came in names exam third is an NREM. We talk about sleep polysomnography, we need to talk about the normal sleep cycle. This is a sleep histogram depiction. We start from awake stage to the onset of sleep that is called sleep latency time. We start with NREM 1 to NREM 2 to NREM 2, 3 NREM 4. Then we again go to 3, 2 and then comes REM. The time taken to first REM to come is 90 minutes, REM latency time. Please, it is important for you to note, REM latency time is 90 minutes. Then after that, it continues like this. Then we talk about what is a normal sleep histogram. Organization of human sleep cycle is awake 1, 2, 3, 4, then REM. 3 2 REM then 2 3 4 3 2 and there are some intermittent periods of awakening as you can see. Now let us talk about how a normal sleep histogram looks like awake NREM 1 2 3 4 3 2 1 REM then let us talk about the similar sleep histogram this is the normal which you are able to see let us talk about the similar sleep histogram in a case of narcolepsy what is narcolepsy narcolepsy is a hypersomnolescence disorder characterized by a tetrad of daytime sleep attacks hypnagogic hypnopompic hallucination sleep paralysis and cataplexy sudden loss of voluntary muscle tone and what is the psg finding in narcolepsy very very important sorem sleep onset rem compare this with the previous one this is the previous one where REM came after 90 minutes and this is the narcolepsy, so REM. After a person was awake, there was sleep onset REM. Sleep onset REM is a very, very important PSG finding of narcolepsy. Now, if I talk about excessive daytime sleepiness and the PSG finding in a case of OSA and the PSG finding in a case of OSA, see the first upper, upper is the PS sleep histogram in a case of OSA. If you can see clearly, there are many periods of awakening. There are many periods of awakening in OSA and there is practically no REM sleep. So, if I take give you a take home message, narcolepsy, so REM, OSA, no REM. Practically no REM sleep and less of deep sleep. And when the down picture is depicting when the patient was being treated the treatment will be talked about by Dr. Bharat when the patient was being treated the sleep pattern normalized. Now I would like to summarize the PSG finding Dr. Bharat over to you. So this patient was uh, done a PSG so initially we have done a diagnostic study and there was uh, apnea hypapnea index of 40.6 per hour so whenever apnea hypapnea index it is number of apneas and uh, hypapneas per hour if it is more than 30, it is considered as severe obstructive sleep apnea. This patient had uh, more than 40. So, sleep efficiency was inadequate, sleep latency prolonged and characteristically there was a significant reduction in uh, REM sleep as uh, Sar told and moderate snore is observed. And most characteristic feature of obstructive sleep apnea is also whenever there is some obstruction, there will also be desaturation, decrease in oxygen concentration. So, average SP voted during his wakeful state was 91, during sleep was 86, it has fallen down and during his sleep minimal SP voted was 74 percent. So, now we have uh, during that night only we have started CPAP. So, this is called as split night sleep study. So, initial part was diagnostic without CPAP. Then with CPAP we are titrating. So, when we titrated with CPAP at pressure 8 centimeter H2O, he had good REM sleep and previously his saturation during sleep was 86, now it has improved to 91 and he was comfortable and was having pleasant sleep. Now, let us see what is actually apnea. So, if you can see here the blue arrow marks, there is a flow absence. So, prior to that you can see little bit of uh, increased waves and there is a straight line. So, apnea means cessation of air flow for at least 10 seconds. Now, let us see what is hypapnea. So, here also you can see there is a little bit decrease in flow at the blue arrow marks, but it is not complete cessation. It is more than 30 percent reduction or associated with desaturation of more than 3 percent. Apnea means it has to be a flat line. 
whereas hypapnea means it is a little bit less decreased so it will they will be having flow but it is a more than 30 percent reduction then now how do you differentiate is it obstructive or strengthen so obstructive sleep apnea there will be apnea means flow will be absent but his respiratory effort will be persistent so you can see in the below arrow mark green arrow mark, arrow mark there is still persisting respiratory effort but above blue arrow mark is showing that there is no flow now coming to central sleep apnea here patients ventilatory drive will be lost so because of that there will be apnea and also his effort will be completely absent so it will be flat line during flow and also flat line during thorax and abdomen movement so central sleep apnea no flow no effort obstructive sleep apnea there will be no flow but persisting respiratory effort so now we can divide this sleep breathing uh, disorders into two main aspects one is obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea so the definition says it is repetitive upper airway obstruction leading to apnea and hypapnea apnea is complete cessation hypapnea is more than 30 percent cessation with 3 percent more than 3 percent oxygen desaturation with persistent respiratory effort this is very important there is respiratory effort still persisting causing sleep fragmentation this sleep fragmentation will cause loss of quality of sleep this will reflect as daytime sleepiness and there will be altered psychosocial behavior and because of daytime sleepiness he will be more prone to collisions accidents as we have seen in uh, previous case and cardiovascular stimulation so whenever there is arousal there will be catecholamine stimulation so this will cause uh, hypertension and cardiac risk such as mi arrhythmias sudden cardiac deaths and cardiovascular accidents and oxygen desaturation during sleep when there is oxygen desaturation there will be hypoxemia this hypoxemia can lead to pulmonary vasoconstriction which can progress to pulmonary hypertension and also core pulmonal so all of these are complications of obstructive sleep apnea or consequences which will be as frequently in aims and AHI more than 5 per hour is considered as obstructive sleep apnea so if there is AHI less than 5 it is normal 5 to 14 is mild obstructive sleep apnea so 15 to 29 is moderate obstructive sleep apnea more than or equal to 30 it is severe obstructive sleep apnea then coming to central sleep apnea it is cessation of ventilation during sleep due to loss of ventilatory drive for more than or equal to 10 seconds with no respiratory effort in short obstruction no flow with respiratory effort central no flow and no respiratory effort and there is another entity called obesity hypoventilation syndrome also called as pickwickian syndrome like the character in novel of charles dickens so this is a triad characterized by obesity morbid obesity chronic alveolar hypoventilation so whenever uh, you do his avg he will be having hypercapnia that is more than 45 mm hg and sleep related breathing disorder in absence of any other causes of hypoventilation now let us see how do we manage the case so in the present case he was having severe obstructive sleep apnea so probably more than 40 so in these cases usually it will be a combination of behavioral therapy and medical management so behavioral therapy so we are trying to reduce his weight and his sleep hygiene should be good stop smoking alcohol and follow good habits then coming to the actual management options if there is any predominant upper airway obstruction then we can go for surgery so in the current patient there was nothing significant in his upper airway so basically here the defect was uh, obstructive sleep apnea and there was obstruction so here treatment of choice will be medical management that is CPAP so CPAP is the mainstay of treatment and it acts as a pneumatic splint it will blow air via your mask and will try to keep your airway open whenever your airway is open it will not fall down because of that there will be decreased snoring decreased arousals and decreased consequences of obstructive sleep apnea and patient will have pleasant sleep uh, thank you dr Bharat. so this was our case on uh, ob uh, obstructive sleep apnea but my means of this i have some take home messages for you please remember polysomnography is done for sleep disorders which include the parasomnias 
the narcolepsies, hypersomnolence disorder, and most important, sleep related breathing disorders. Sleep related breathing disorder, as summarized by Dr. Bharat, OSA, obstructive, where the effort is present but the apnea is there, and central, where the effort is absent and the apnea is there. And third, that is the Pickwickian syndrome, very, very important for your exams. And polysomnography is EG, EMG, EOG, that is just a part which we I have just shown. That is done for the sleep stage determination. We can talk about many disorders related to that. And th please remember the sleep histogram finding, the take home message for sleep histogram finding SOREM in narcolepsy and NOREM in OSA. So, with this, we conclude our today's session. Thank you for following, uh, thank you all for following us. Uh, thank you. So, you follow us for further videos on our channel. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube channel of Dams Daily. I am Dr. Sachin Aroda signing off psychiatry segment and Dr. Bharat. Thank you. Thank you.